and then start the recording again. So, my name is Mordred Viking, and I would like to welcome you back to this stream, where we are, of course, playing the pre-release version of Imperial Rome. Uh, Field Marshal, if you're there, could you post up another notification in the streaming tab, just to say that the break is over and we're going again? Might pull in a few more people as well. Um... So, in the previous six hours, we've seen quite a few of the players growing rather substantially. I would say that my MVP so far goes to Emnil. Like, he started as a fairly small uh, migrating tribe and has expanded tremendously. He has, or maybe... He certainly had the largest standing player army in the world. 121 cohorts, the only one that would probably match that would be Egypt or Carthage. And yeah, he's he's way ahead of everyone else in that. It's really quite impressive. And then we've also got... Um, do, 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 do. Old Man Mordaith over here in Kugernia. Bit of Southern Netherlands, also known as Belgium, and a bit of France. And he's doing pretty well. This is the second nation that he has been in, although basically in the same region. Then we've got Lambert down here in Helvetia, starting in kind of this region, and then actually creating the formable nation of Helvetia, in the same way as Emnil has formed the nation of Suabia. We did have a couple of British players. We had Lionheart over in Isenia and Mustawust in Dobunia. Uh, Mus, I do believe, is returning in a couple of hours' time. Is my green screen failing again? Oh, yeah, it is. Let's go and do that. There we go. Uh, so, Dubinia is probably coming back again. Isenia, I don't think, is. But um, the two nations are still alive. And in fact, Isenia seems to have split in two. So, there are, in fact, double the Isenias now. Then we had Rose, who was initially in Brittany, but eventually moved down to Sparta, where she has been kicking ass and taking names, moving into Crete. And I suspect Crete could form to be one of the first flashpoints of the game because so far we haven't had that much player conflict. Sparta and Macedon did fight a war but not really against each other, it's just that they were both on like different sides of an alliance chain. I don't think they actually fought each other though. Um, but we have got um, Sicily who has a couple of vassals on Crete and then Sparta has started to spread to Crete as well. Um, so I do somewhat suspect that that's going to be a flashpoint. Then over in Spain, we had a couple of players. We had Silesia was the solar gamer, who has gone to bed, might be back again later. We had Gaming Gabster in Tour de Tania, who I don't know if he's going to be back or not. And then we had have Roach in Carthage, which is in Iberia, and then also North Africa. Uh, Roach did sell the... Carthaginian territories in Sicily to Syracuse that Sicily could form and they seem to have a pretty good working relationship from that point onwards. I feel like I'm missing someone. I feel like there was another player in Iberia. I'm going to feel terrible because I'm fairly sure there was. I don't know who that was though. Nope, it's gone. Uh, what else do we have? We have got Midgeman in Rome, starting out very aggressive, taking tons of land. Since then, he's kind of eased off a little bit on the gas, primarily, I suspect, because he has had a critical manpower shortage. His economy is looking fairly healthy now, but like you were saying during the break, he was investing... Uh, yeah, I mentioned Game Capster. He was investing quite a lot in marketplaces, um, granaries and the other buildings. In fact, we haven't talked about buildings. I've been scratching my head thinking, what else can we talk about? Buildings, that's one of them. So when we finish the kind of recap on all the different players, we will talk about that. We've got Windslayer over here in Eraviskia. Um, actually got loads of space to expand in still. He could go north, he could go east, he could take a lot of stuff. Then we did have Potato McWhiskey in this region over here, I think starting out as Ansemencia, who are still alive, and then switching to Ratasencia or Getia. I forget who his second nation was, and then didn't do particularly well in that one, and then has gone offline, I believe. Yeah, he's still away. 
Um, then we have got the Hellenic powers, starting with Horathrak in Thrace, uh, having secured quite a lot of terri territory pretty quickly, still securing a little bit more. Then we have got uh, Agrippa down in Macedonia, securing his territories there, and then Rose to their south, as we mentioned earlier. Over to the northeast, we have got Benjamin Magnus in the Bosphoric Kingdom, uh, trying to secure the world supply of steppe horses has been apparently or is his stated goal We have then got Zetalia down in Egypt He say, stated from the beginning that he wanted to play a very tall very wealthy basically the bank of the Mediterranean uh, Let's take a look at his wealth to see how true that is 23 ducats a month income is pretty impressive 64,000 manpower uh, that is definitely not an Egypt to be trifled with, although Carthage is fairly close in terms of income, and in fact, at the moment, Carthage and Egypt are allied. Let's just double check to see if that's still true. Yes, Carthage and Egypt are still allied. Uh, that's one other thing we should probably do is go through all of the players and see precisely who is actually allied and who isn't. Then... So all of those guys. We have got OMFG Blondie over here in Bactria. Uh, probably, I have to say, playing one of the most interesting games, even though he's so far removed from many of the other players, simply because he has brought the Seleucid Empire to its knees. He's working on Moria, bringing them to its knees, and then he's just going to have a humongous amount of space to expand in. Um, Bactria definitely playing the more intrigue style game doing a lot of character assassinations reducing uh, provincial loyalties basically to break apart the big empires and showing that such things are indeed possible in Imperator Rome all right so let's take a quick look at the alliances I think I'm only going to check for the uh, players who are currently here so there is a defense note those guarantees No alliances for Swabia, though they seem to have pretty good relations with these two. Kugernia is guaranteed by Swabia. So he is... Okay, so Swabia is probably a, a, a too big a power. So they are guaranteeing Helvetica, they are guaranteeing Kugernia, uh, Bastania, and then also Scria. Yeah, so he is guaranteeing these two powers. These guys have an alliance with each other, so the Germanic power is definitely playing close. Windslayer, a little bit isolated here in the middle of Hungary? I think that's Hungary. Um, at war with Bohemia, at war with Toriskia, and no actual alliances or anything like that with anyone. Then down in Carthage, we know that Carthage has the alliance with Egypt, and then also a bunch of subject states, most of them being these tiny little states that are kind of there on their own. Midgeman, now also allied with Egypt. Interesting. So Egypt is allied to both Rome and Carthage. So Egypt definitely playing like the big I'm going to batter everyone type game. And Rome is actually guaranteeing Sicily. Interesting, because we know that there is a bit of tension over in Crete, as we mentioned. So has Crete actually given up their subjects? No, they haven't. They still have them. So Crete is guaranteed by Rome. They have a couple of subject states. They don't have any alliances with anyone. In fact, Crete, uh, Sicily is right now integrating Gortnia. And Gortnia is this guy. At that point, we will have a direct um, border between Sparta and Gortnia in Crete. Which leads us to Sparta. Who is Sparta allied to? Sparta has no allies. I know it's been kind of stated that Thrace and Macedonia would assist Sparta, but it doesn't look like that assistance would stretch to military intervention. There is an alliance between Thrace and Macedonia, so again, Sparta kind of isolated there on her own. Um, Macedon is being guaranteed by Egypt, and I think that Thrace is too. So it is quite possible that Sparta may well find herself in over her head. Then, uh, Zetalia. Egypt has the alliance with Carthage and Rome, guaranteeing Macedon and Thrace. Nobody else. There was speculation that that guarantee might have been there at the start of the game, but considering who he's guaranteeing and the fact that it's just the two players, it's just those. And then we have got uh, Blondie over here, 
with no allies at all. But it's not really that surprising, unless it was AI uh, characters that he was going to try and bring together. Egypt's going to be in trouble when the Punic War comes. I'm... Yeah, maybe. I mean, they'll basically have to pick a side between Rome and Carthage. I suspect they'll go on uh, Carthage's side. That alliance has been far longer than the Roman one. I think the Roman one's a fairly new development, actually. Um, right, buildings. Let's talk about buildings. And let's do it in Carthage. No, well... Yeah, Carthage has been building some stuff. So, in Imperial Rome, there are four buildings. We have the... Marketplace, the training camp, the fortress, and the granary. Uh, you can build any combination of those four buildings. You can build as many buildings as you have population divided by five. So for every five population in the city, you can build an additional building slot. You can build as many of those buildings as you like, up to the number of slots. So here in Zoigetina, there are two building slots. It could be two granaries, it could be two marketplaces, it could be a fortress and a marketplace. It could be a mar um, training camp and a marketplace, which is, I think, what we have here. And then every level of these buildings give different bonuses, basically stacking bonuses. So for every level of marketplace, you get 5% more local tax, 5% more commerce income, and 1% more local civilization level. For the training camp, you get 10% extra local manpower, so you do kind of want to build the training camps where you have a lot of freemen, and you want the marketplaces where you have a lot of slaves and or citizens. Fortresses increase the fortress level by plus one. Uh, for every level of fortress, it takes 5,000 men to siege it and also increases the level of the fortress, meaning it can hold out uh, better. Then there is also uh, there are also granaries, which will increase the local population growth by 0.06 and then also the slave happiness by 2.5%. So granaries plus marketplaces equals very productive slaves. Um, that's basically all there is to say about buildings, I think. Have I talked about civilization level? I haven't, because this is one of the stats that I'm not hugely familiar with, because the barbarians don't really do civilization. See, Swabia's civilization here, level 6. Carthage's, 45, 40, 46. So with the low level of civilization, you get a little bit of population growth, you get plus 20% supply limit, Barbarian growth is reduced by 0.05, citizen happiness is increased by 10%, freeman happiness is increased by 7, and then local tribesman happiness is reduced by 5. Your civilization level is capped, mostly depending on your government form. So if we just go and switch over to Swabia right now, we can see that they are a settled, no, they're a federated tribe. If we go here... Um, whoops. That and then there. Migratory tribe uh, gives you plus 15% something and plus 0.1% something else. I don't actually know what those bonuses are. And it's not going to tell me. That's actually, yes it will. Those bonuses are in here. So that's tribesman output plus 15% and then two for every monarch point. And then also national population growth, plus 0.1. Um, so that one doesn't give you anything. What about Carthage's? Let's switch over to Carthage again. Carthage's government gives monthly wages for characters minus 10%, national citizen happiness plus 15%. Ah, here we go. Country civilization level plus 30% because they're an oligarchic republic. And the higher civilization level for Carthage right now gives them a 0.23% bonus to population growth. So it's basically half of your civ level. 94% extra supply limits. You can have much bigger armies in the high civilization areas. Barbarian growth is reduced by 0.23%. So far fewer barbarians rising up. 47% extra citizen happiness. 32% extra freeman happiness. But you do get a minus 23% tribesman happiness. So the more civilization you have, generally the more beneficial uh, it is for your empire, except for tribesmen, who you will want to try and promote away from tribesmen into freemen or citizens. 
And then there's one other stat which we need to talk about, which is centralization. We'll do that in a minute. Uh, also for the Langobards, is that a video a day? Yes. Well, no, actually, it's three videos a day while we're in the pre-release. Dropping to two videos a day for a day or two. I don't remember exactly. I don't actually have my schedule in front of me. And then one video a day after the pre-release. So lots of content being posted up. Plus, this is going to get chopped up and posted up. I don't know if that's going to be immediately. I'll need to talk to the others and see exactly how we want to do this. Have there been any player versus player wars? No. There was a middling war between Macedon and Sparta, but they didn't actually fight each other despite being at war. Former country is huge now, 700 plus pops. I doubt it's that big, but we can certainly have a look. 528. But yeah, your country's been doing really well, actually. In fact, so is Cilicia. At Gapster, were there three of you in Iberia? Was it just you, Roach, and Sola? Was there someone else? I could have sworn there were three, like, Iberian powers plus Carthage. But I might just be thinking Carthage was one of those Iberian powers. That was it, okay. I must just be going crazy. So yeah, the Iberian former player nations are doing well. The British ones... Eh. Dobunia is kind of surviving. Isenia, I would say, is not doing great. And then you got these guys who are just doing crazy, like Swabia right now is huge. I don't think tribesmen can demote into slaves unless... Slaves... The main way to get slaves is conquering territories. Left with 400-ish population. Good to see they took over the southern Portuguese coast. I had actually missed that, but yes, they have. Because I know you got up to, like, here, didn't you? Not enough Berlins, 2 out of 10. Uh, let's see. German border is about here. So Berlin must be... here somewhere. Actually, I think it's probably further. Bergia, maybe? I suspect that Bergia is Berlin. But I don't know for sure. Just because big rivers tend to th flow through capital cities. On the river to the left, Colonia. Really? That far west? This feels too far west. Can you feed the land to your vassals in this game? I don't know, Sirius. I suspect so? But I don't know for sure. Ooh, Helvetia is having problems. What's going on here? We have got a rather major civil war. So on the Helvetian revolt side, they have taken a couple of the chiefs because they have a 10 uh, strong light cavalry. But the loyalists are quite a lot stronger. But hopefully we can see a battle or two emerging because of this. There's a couple of armies gathering up here in the north. 11,000 on the way in. Oh, it was Kurgernia that I had selected previously. That's the checkered green and white in the blue corner. I was trying to find that nation. But it does look like um, Helvetia's allies have jumped in on the war. Here we go. So the Kurgernians are losing 10% because they've gone shock versus bottleneck. However... They just have more troops, even though the rebels are using light cavalry, which are good against archers and also light infantry. So in terms of unit quality, these guys are doing worse. And also the tactics, it's just pure numbers. So when it comes to... Oh, we didn't get a pop-up. Probably the losses for Kugernia would have been a lot worse. But a victory is a victory. And once again, this is a civil war, so all of the dark purple... The land will just switch sides. There is no own. There's no occupation. There's just ownership here. From the paradox streams, I don't think you can feed vassals currently. Okay, cool. Berlin's halfway between the Elbe and the Oder.
Just seeing what's between the two. Population of Proto-Berlin's not very high. Alright, so how are the numbers now looking? See, ten, 10 cohorts, but only 4,000 cavalry. So they've taken some pretty hefty losses in this war so far. So I'm fairly sure that that's going to be pretty one-sided. Um, any other wars going on? Bactria, are you fighting anyone? Bactria has CVs, but is not fighting anyone. And it does look like Helvetia's main forces are cavalry, <laughs> judging by these battles. 32,000 cavalry. He's just chasing those one stacks and just beating them down. Just squish, squish, squish. What's that? Starving populations. Urania should be it. That one. Much higher population. Like, notably higher. Yeah, I suspect that that is Berlin right there. Like, I don't know when Berlin became a big city. But the fact that it has such a high population compared to everything else does make a lot of sense. What's it produce? Vegetables. Another little battle going on here. That's basically just AI suiciding itself. Charging into even more cavalry units. Yeah, that, that war's over. Uh, has Rome decided to go after Boy yet? Does not look like it. Rome's trying to get a little bit of manpower, but the process is pretty slow. He's got 591 in the bank right now. He needs another 8,000 to replenish. And his maximum is 162,000. Now if we go to the macro builder, we can see that a lot of this area has no building slots left anymore. That would be the green areas. So clearly he's building something, and I suspect it probably is training camps. Yeah, level 3 training camp. Oh no, that's not. Level 4 granary. Building mostly granaries, trying to get that population up. Interesting. Can we pause the game while I go cook dinner? Well, like chat saying, you can pause it, or you can just watch the uh, video on demand. What time is this stream on till? 8pm British summer time. Ish. We haven't actually set an end time, but I think 12 hours is enough. I can already feel my voice going a little bit hoarse, so I don't want to, like, completely ruin it, because I am supposed to be streaming again tomorrow the single player stuff. I've also switched up the drinks a bit, so I'm having a Pepsi right now. Needed that burst of sugar, because I really did feel I was flagging a bit towards the end of the pre-break bit. I needed that break. It was a really good idea to have breaks every three hours. I'm glad that we kind of insisted upon that. Uh, are there any players that we want to interview? Do you have any questions for various players uh, that we can go and ask? Like, I'm here for you guys as much as I am just showing everything off. Because I'm kind of running out of ideas of things that I can be showing off. Um, actually, let's let's go through all the different tabs. That's something we haven't done yet. So, in the nation overview, you get all of the details of your nation. You get a basically a, a summary of the provincial details. So you get the different types of population, you get the number of trade routes active and available, and then also the provincial loyalty. Talk to Egypt. Okay, we can do that. Uh, let's go and say hi to Egypt. I'm going to grab him and put him in the commentary box. Yoink! Hey, Zay. Hello. So how's Egypt doing at the moment? Well, I'm currently preparing for a war against Thrugia. Oh. I can actually get a claim now. Interesting. Yeah, I can see all your armies are suspiciously massing there to the north. Which is totally not suspicious at all. So who's yeah, Frigia? Yeah, I'm not seeing... Allied to. 
they got some vassals or something like that. Or tributaries right there. I know for a while they were allied to Sparta, but it doesn't look like that's the case anymore. No, not anymore. Yeah, I think that's because Phrygia pulled Sparta in the war against Macedon, which is why those two were technically fighting for a bit. Ah, yeah. So if a Pontic war between Carthage and Rome were to break out, I see you're now allied to both of them. What's that going to mean? Well, currently I'm uh, not going to join either one on offensive war. And eventually I'm going to backstab Mitch, I think. <laughs> That's exactly what I told chat. That's exactly what I said. If a Pontic war broke out, I suspect you would join Carthage's side. I mean, not on offensive, but it, if Mitch declared war, yeah, I would join Rhodes. But if Rhodes declares war, then I'm going to stay hell out of that war. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so do you see any flashpoints emerging around the world? Like any sources of tension? Well, I have a feeling that the Greeks and Rome are going to fight in Greece in the near future. Yeah. And then I, I have no idea what the Germanics are going to do. I think the Germanics are going to stay quiet for a bit and just build up and build up and build up and then shock everyone with just the sheer numbers that they can bring. Like, Quite Suavia's possible. forces are scary. Oh, yeah. 138 cohorts now. Yeah, that's more than what I have. Yep. Like, you're the one I've been comparing to for a while. He's now 40 cohorts ahead of you. Yep. I mean, he is pretty big. In terms of land. So when do you think this war against Phrygia is going to uh, kick off? Uh, in the very near future, actually. You getting CBs now? Already have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so right about now. Ah, there we go. Boom, war is declared. Egypt strolls in with about a couple of troops. Yeah, it's few. I think I got about 70,000 here. You could do with more ships though. 37 against 28. You're Egypt, one of the predominant naval powers of this era. Is anyone raiding coasts to steal slaves? Is that a thing you can do? That is a thing you can do, but I think you need to have certain traditions or something like that. That would make sense, yes. Yeah, I do actually remember seeing the Raid Coast's ability. There it is, Victor Spoils. It's the fourth one down on the third column. Ah. Raid Port's ability, plus 20% enslavement efficiency for you. Not bad, actually. That's a really good combo. Get more slaves in general and raid ports. Oh, go on then. So, here we go. We can see some slaves being sent to Alexandria. And that's actually something we haven't seen yet. Is like populations being driven out of their cities and to a new life within Egypt. Not too much yet. I mean, I'll be colonizing a little bit to the west. One to Alexandria and three died. So, yeah. Wars are pretty brutal to local populations if you get occupied. Yeah, you don't want to be on the receiving end. Oh, I can't click on this region. So, has the chat had any favourites yet? I don't know. Does the chat have any favourites yet? It's a good question. 